Hi, my name is Jawad Gold and I am bridge engineer in Lincoln, Nebraska. In this video, I'll talk about torsion in bridge abutments and piers, cab beams due to braking loads. I like to start by showing a video that might be helpful in visualizing the mechanism by which braking loads induce torsion in the cab beams. Here I have a remote control toy car placed on top of a floor tile that is supported over rollers. I'm going to move this car forward and then suddenly apply brakes. That will bring the car to the stop relative to the floor tile. However, the floor tile is going to move forward because of the inertial force of the car that will get transferred to the tile due to friction between the tires and the tile. As the tile move forward, it will put the rollers beneath it into rolling motion. And if the rolling motion of these rollers is constrained, these rollers will experience torsion. Let's watch the video. Let's watch it one more time. Now let's watch the video in slow motion. As the car accelerates, it pushes the tiles backward. As I apply the brakes, the cars decelerate and moves the tile forward. Similar mechanism happens on bridges. This slide shows a truck on a bridge deck. As the truck applies brakes, some of its inertial force get transferred to the deck due to friction between the tires and the deck. The deck then tends to move forward inducing torsion in the cab beams. The amount of inertial force transferred from the truck to the bridge deck depends on many factors such as deceleration, weight of the truck, friction between the tires and the deck surface. Research has been able to quantify these factors and as a result we can compute the braking loads as per ASHTO article 3.6.4 which states that braking load is maximum of 25% of the truck load or 5% of the truck load plus lane load multiplied by the number of lanes and the multiple presence factor. 25% of the truck load is greater than 5% of the truck plus lane load for the bridges less than 450 foot in length. So for these bridges we can compute the braking force and it comes out to be 37.8 kips for one lane loaded, 63 kips for two lanes loaded, and 83 kips for three lanes loaded. As you can see that the braking load can be significant and should be considered in design calculations. Now this braking load is applied six feet from the top of the deck as per ASHTO article 3.6.4. The magnitude of the torsion and the lateral load this braking force induced into the cab beams depends on two main factors. One is the structural dimensions, that is distance from the top of the deck to the top of the bearing and depth of the cab beams. The other factor is bearing condition and configuration. By bearing condition I mean whether the bearing is fixed or expansion bearing. And by configuration, I mean if there is a single row of bearings or two row of bearings on a cap beam. Now let's look at some common types of bridges and figure out the magnitude of torsion induced into their cap beams due to braking loads. This slide shows a two-span bridge with non-integral pier caps. This is very common for steel bridges. This bridge can be idealized as this beam with rollers representing the pension bearings and hinge representing fixed bearing. Now let's say the truck applies brakes when it's very close to the abutment. Then we'll have the braking force six foot above the deck near the abutment location. This braking force can be transferred to the bearing location by means of parallel axis theorem. This involves applying equal and opposite force at the bearing level. One of these forces forms a couple and applies moment at the bearing location. Let's call it the braking moment. The magnitude of the braking moment is simply the braking force multiplied by 6 plus h. Now we have a longitudinal braking force and the braking moment on our beam that is transferred to these cab beams through these 
bearings. The expansion bearings that are represented by rollers here are not capable of transferring any longitudinal force. So in this case, abutment cap beams will not experience any longitudinal force even if the truck breaks very close to the abutment location. As far as the moment is concerned, none of these bearings are capable of transferring this moment. And this moment is resisted by vertical reactions at the bearing locations. Since bridges have long spans, these vertical reactions tend to be small and can be ignored. So cab beams of non-integral abutments with expansion bearing don't experience any torsion or lateral loads from the braking force. Now let's look at the non-integral pier cap with single row of fixed bearings. This is very common for steel bridges. And let's say the truck applies brakes when it's very close to the pier location. Then we'll have the braking force six foot above the deck near the pier location. This braking force can be transferred to the bearing location by means of parallel axis theorem. And we'll have the longitudinal braking force and the braking moment that will be transferred to this cap beam through these bearings. As discussed before, these supports cannot transfer the moment and it will be resisted by vertical reactions and can be ignored. The braking force will be transferred to the top of cap beam and it can apply a lateral force and a torque at the centroid of the cap beam. So in this case, the lateral force on the cab beam would simply be equal to the braking force and the torque on the cab beam would be equal to the braking force multiplied by half of the depth of the cab beam. The semi-integral abutments with expansion bearings shown on this slide are very common for pre-stressed concrete girder bridges. The semi-integral abutments are not very different from non-integral abutments in terms of transferring the braking loads. So as we discussed before, the moment will be resisted by the vertical reaction that can be ignored and the force will get transferred to the fixed bearing location. So abutments in this case will not experience any lateral force or torque due to braking load. Now here is an interesting case. Here we have a semi-integral pure cap with two rows of fixed bearing. This is very common for pre-stressed concrete girder bridges. The two rows of fixed bearing can be idealized as two hinges placed very close to each other. And these hinges have capability of transferring this braking moment to the cap beam by generating huge vertical reactions. So in this case, the torque applied on the cap beams will be equal to the braking moment plus the lateral load, which is equal to the braking force multiplied by half of the depth of the cap beam. In this last case, I want to show bridges with integral abutments and piers. This is getting common for both steel and concrete bridges due to low maintenance cost. In this case, we can idealize the bridge to have fixed sports that are capable of transferring the moment as well as the braking force. So in this case, the torque would be equal to the braking force multiplied by six plus half of the distance from the top of the deck to the bottom of the pier cap. And the lateral force would simply be equal to the braking force. Thank you for watching the video. Please post your question and comments in the comment section below. Please like and subscribe to get notification on newly posted videos.